No one will ever tell me I did not see that light because I saw a light and I felt the light. And when that all went away and I came to, and then the motion started happening and then Blanton was born, what, 10, 15 minutes later, I knew I got to get busy with what I'm supposed to be doing on this earth because life is very, very precious and short. And that changed my whole life. This is the Cumbin Bell Show. Let's just go on and spill the tea. This is one of the realest persons I've ever met. My mission is to encourage every single woman. We're here to lift y'all up. There's no one more effective than moms. You mess with the bull, you gonna get the horns. I need coffee, I need Jesus, and I need therapy. <laughs> <laughs> if you can bring a smile to people's faces, why would you not? True confidence is knowing who you are and why you're here. Hey y'all, I am so excited. I want you to stay tuned to the end of this episode to get a sneak listen of my brand new book, Collecting Confidence, that drops next week. Pre-order your copy today. You won't be disappointed. Hey, everybody. This is the Kim Gravel Show. And this season, we are all talking about how we're going to level up our lives and step into our purpose and calling. And we're going to do it. We're going to do it together, y'all. So today is another episode about, you know, how, Zach, we can level up our lives. Oh. Nope, Kim, I'm breaking in. I'm sorry. We are flipping oh. the script on today's episode. <laughs> oh, Kim, my gosh. No, I'm not letting you. I, we had we had a totally different episode planned. I'm, I'm throwing it all out, okay? Okay. We oh, can't, Lord. We can't do it because here's the thing, Kim. Your book comes out next week week. And I know. Can you believe I it? I know. I'm so excited. I know you're so excited. I know that you've been going around and talking about it. And I got yes. to have like a little taste of that, right? A few weeks ago, because I got to hang out while you were actually doing an interview about the book. And it got me thinking that I wanted to interview you about ah, the book. Okay. All because right. I've read it. I have, I have questions. I have questions. Okay. This is not oh, going to be oh, a softball oh. interview, Kim. I was going to say, is... oh my gosh. <laughs> so we're not, we're, we're, we're talking a deep dive here. This is not a little PR no. interview going, you know, no, 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 10 no, no, minute no. interview. Okay. No. All right. I don't do gird softball interviews. This is going right, to be, gird your loins. loins, everybody. All right. So hold on. Wait a second. We're starting over. We're starting over. Okay. Ready? We're going to do. Yep. Hey, y'all. This is is the Zach Miller Show, formerly known as the Kim Gravel Show. This episode, we are leveling up our lives and our bookshelves and stepping into our purpose. And we're doing it together with Kim, who is going to be the guest today. All right. So I just <laughs> happen to is. have the book. the book. Oh, she just, just happens to have the book. Oh my gosh, Zach, <laughs> this is fantastic. I can't wait. I don't have a copy of, can I just say, I don't have a hard <laughs> copy of the book yet. You're going to get one. I promise. Okay. I had. Before look, it comes out I, next week, you're going to get one. I have to say it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I did order one. I bought one. Can I just say like, there was like a moment though, when it was early on, I mean, months and months ago, when you sent me a draft of the book and it was a word doc. And I was like, I feel very special. Like this wow. is, there's a lot of trust here, yes, right? And absolutely. like that was, because uh, let me just say for the people who, you know, you're following along with the show, you know that Kim's been writing this book, but as someone who's been working with Kim, it, watching you write this book has really been enlightening because there was a moment where I was like, I think I could write a book. And then I saw this process and the amount of times where you're like, I have this book deadline. I just need to get through this one. And then like, <laughs> there's another book deadline and another book deadline. And I was just like, this is a lot of work. I know. Right. I know. And you know, I'm not naturally just this, you know, I, I, I write like I talk. So there's a lot of editing, grammar corrections <laughs> and spelling checks that had to happen to make this possible. But wait, I haven't even, hold on. I haven't even introduced you. So okay, hold, do it. just, just, just hang out for a second because I, I have, 
hold on. I need to just say, and I need to pull up my notes here. Uh, today's guest on the show is someone you may have heard of. Kim Gravel is the host of the incredible podcast, just <laughs> such a great podcast called The Kim Gravel Show. She's the CEO and founder of the widely popular fashion and beauty brands, Belle by Kim Gravel and Belle Beauty. She starred in the hit reality show, Kim of Queens. She was crowned Miss Georgia in 1991, one of the youngest ever, well, at the time, the youngest ever. Um, I think there's been younger since. She's America's best girlfriend. She's my best girlfriend. Um, please welcome Kim Gravel. Kim Gravel. <laughs> okay, is that your daughter beatboxing at what age? I taught my daughter to beatbox for this intro for you. Okay, that I am like, peace out, Cub Scouts. That is classic. <laughs> Absolutely. When you hear a young kid beatbox, what, what more do you want? <laughs> I, oh my gosh, I love that little peanut. It took like seven takes, let's be honest. But okay. How amazing is that? Mm. Kim, welcome to the show. Thank you. We're Thank so you for having excited me to have you. Let me hear, let me give you a round of applause. Hold on. Welcome to the show. We're professionals on this show, all right? Everyone gets everyone gets an intro. Everyone gets an applause. I want to get right into it, though, because okay. um, everyone knows who you are. I'm not going to pretend like they don't. Obviously, this is your podcast. Um, I The thing that, like, strikes me about this book, and I've read it a couple times now. I've, oh, like, wow. ha I, I read an earlier draft. I read a later draft. I don't think I've read the final draft yet, um, so I'm excited to actually get it. Um, and I know how much of your just wisdom, your soul has gone into this thing. Um, and I guess my first question is like, why? Why did you decide to do this now, right? Because I think this is like an important moment for you. And I'd like to know a little bit more about like why this book is coming out now and why it's important for you in this season of your life. I think, the reason, I, I won't say I think, I know the reason for me writing the book is now with this message is because I can fully stand two feet on the ground in full confidence in this message. Like, I, I, I'm not saying I've arrived because by no means have I arrived, but I have accepted, embraced, and been excited about this place in my life. Full confidence. Absolutely full confidence. I, and, and I can't, it is a feeling. It is a knowing. It is a confidence that's like none, none other. And I, th I think it took me a whole lifetime, or at least up until this point, to, to figure that out. Because yeah. I believe, Zach, we're all born with confidence. And life chips away at it, and we lose it as we as we travel along that our path. And so, for me, I'm challenging people to to look back over their lives and gather it back up because they they've had it from from day one. You mentioned in the book as as you're kind of bringing people along on this journey and telling people like how they can think about finding your own calling, right? And there's this really like inspirational moment where you talk about what were you good at as a child? Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, can you bring us into that sort of moment and, and how you, you know, work through finding, maybe finding out a little bit more about what you're meant for by thinking about your childhood? So there's a particular, it, it's one of the, it's one of the last chapters. I, I, cause I, I I'm, 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 I'm challenging you to go back into your um, childhood because you knew your calling then, you just didn't know it. You know, you were probably operating yeah. in it and you didn't know it. You didn't know how to define yeah. it. And so for me, when I was in the fifth grade, um, I went to Arcado Elementary School. I was in fifth grade <laughs> and I was, oh Lord, honey, Kim was not, she didn't do a lot with what she had. Okay. I was, uh, <laughs> I wasn't the cutest little thing, you know. I was, you know, I wasn't one of them <laughs> naturally pretty girls, and uh, but you couldn't tell me nothing, okay? You couldn't tell me nothing. I was in the fifth grade, 
And I, there was a fifth grade talent show. I will never forget this as long as I live. And writing the book, this just came to me, just came to me. Yeah. My mom said I wore her out. She's like, you were the hardest child to raise. She said, you always had something going on. You were driving me and your father crazy. And, you know, think about it. So I was going to be in this talent show in the fifth grade. What's, how old are you in the fifth grade? I can't even remember how old I was. Um, uh, fifth like, grade like would be 11, what? 12, something like that. 12, I Probably, think. Yeah. Is it 12? Yeah. S- somewhere around there. Maybe 11. And yeah, maybe. And I, and I said, I'm going to be in this talent show and I'm going to do it with an air band. Air. <laughs> A-I-R. Okay. So this air band. And your friends are in the book being like, what's an air band? I love, I love no, that I, so much. How the heck did I know what an air band was? I didn't know what that yeah, was. So anyway, I was like, but, but I knew we couldn't play instruments. So we were going to fake it. <laughs> we were going to pretend like we were playing instruments because I had seen this movie called Xanadu. And all of you listening will know, Olivia Newton-John, may she rest in peace. There was a soundtrack called Xanadu soundtrack. And on the flip side of the album, there was this instrumental track of the song Suspended in time. And I will never forget it. It's like, keep me suspended in time with you. I know the song to this day. None of the rules apply. So there was an instrumental track. So I went and had my mom. Now, keep in mind, there was no Amazon. There was no (laughs) prime delivery. There was no go on your phone and Google and figure out where you could pick up. I had to go borrow a set of drums a keyboard, a bass, electric guitar, and mics, everything. I had to go borrow wait, everything. No, but I thought, I wait, I thought an air band, like you literally are playing air, not real things. No, we, I wanted, no, we were pretend, we were, we were not playing. You were pretending to play they real instruments. Okay, okay. To okay. Play real I instrument. was picturing this differently. Okay. Think about this now. <laughs> Think about how insane this is. Okay. So we would yeah. we picked up a full set of drums, a keyboard, a bass player, electric guitar, <laughs> all of that. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. We didn't plug any of it in, but we. <laughs> I, I went and had all. I mean, I have pictures of this, and my mom. I just remember my mom was going from pillar to post, collecting all this stuff to take to this school, and she was like, "Kim, y'all can't play instruments." I said, "I don't care. I want it to look so real." Then, I made everybody's outfit. I made their shirts. We we decorated their jeans. I had I had my own outfit. I made everything. I I ironed it all on. I sewed it on a no sew stick, the little strips, and you just sew stuff on without having to sew. I did it all by myself. Okay, the night mm-hmm. of the talent show happens. Yep, it's packed. We're the last. We're the last performance of the talent show. Oh, gosh, I'll never forget this. We all had mullets. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I had mullet haircuts. Sheila. Sheila was my uh, guitar player. I swear, Sheila, if you were watching this and you remember this, or you, you please call me, babe. Please I'm sorry, call me. Sheila. I'm really sorry. I remember she, she was beautiful. <laughs> Sheila was such a beautiful. She was one of the popular girls. And so anyway, so we would all just, so we, we did our song, Keep Me Suspended in Time With You. People went crazy. We won. Uh-huh. It was uh-huh. it was the highlight. So from that moment on, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm a singer. I'm gonna be a singer. Yep. Cause I actually sang. I didn't pretend to sing. I sang. The 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 air band was just playing air, the instrument yeah. playing and instrument. you sang. Yep. So I said, Oh my gosh, I'm a singer. Mm-hmm. No. I was a builder. Mm-hmm. I did all of that right. I did all all of that. None of my friends helped me do that. They just showed up, put on their guitar and pretended to play. When I think back to what that was, that was the first time in my life where my calling showed up and showed out, but I did not recognize it. I thought I was a singer. The special part of that talent show, and the band was called Rare Edition, by the way. The special part of that talent show was not the singing. Lots of people can sing. Very few 10, 11-year-olds can go and pull that off 
by themselves and do it to win. Yep. So that's what I'm talking about. Everybody has that rare edition moment, Zach. Yeah. Everybody has and that And it's moment. hard to get it right. Like, well, it's hard to figure out what to make of it, especially when you're young like that, right? Well, I think everything in purpose, and, and when we talk about purpose and calling and whatever, we're always saying, do. What do you do? What do you do? I'm a singer. I'm a helper. I'm a blah, 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 blah. It's not what you do. It's who you innately are. It just, yep. that just came. I didn't, no one had to teach me how to do that. Yep. It just, that just came out of me. You just did it. I just, I just, I just did it. Yeah. It's not, it's not a career. It's a vocation. It's a calling. It comes from within. That's so cool. I love that story so much. Okay. It's a good story. It's a good story. It's a true story. And there, and there are so many of these gems from your life. You, you go through all of these really important moments of your life. And I want to get into a few more of those moments. And we're going to do that right after this. Hey, y'all. Kim Gravel here. And I'm excited about my book that's releasing very, very soon called Collecting Confidence. And I wrote it because I want everyone to feel confident and be the confident person that you already are and walk in it. Um, I'm hoping that when you read it, you're going to be encouraged. You're going to be inspired. You're going to laugh a little. And also you're going to take my stories of my life, the experiences, the ups, the downs, the ins and outs, the highs, the lows. And it's been that thread in my life that has given me the confidence to be who I was meant to be. And I wanted to do the same for you because you already have it inside of you from the day you were born to right now. It's time to start where you are to become everything you were meant to be. And in Collecting Confidence, it will encourage you to do just that. Collecting Confidence comes out April 25th, and you can pre-order it now wherever books are sold. Let's all do this thing together and walk boldly, y'all, in your collected confidence. Welcome back to the Kim Gravel Show, uh, formerly known as the Kim Gravel Show, now the Zach Miller <laughs> Show. I have taken control. I flipped the script on Kim because I'm so interested in learning more about her book that comes out next week, Collecting Confidence. If you haven't picked it up, get the copy of that book. Um, oh. It will change your life. It really has you, had such an impact on me. Um, I want to get into some of the like most memorable moments here from your life. Um, and there's been some doozies. <laughs> the, fir <laughs> the first thing I want to talk about uh, now that we're back. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I, I totally forgot. Oh, my gosh. I totally forgot because I had my daughter record this. Collection compliments. I had my two year old record the title of the book for you, Kim. This oh, I want to that. You. You've got to send that to me. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure that you pick up Collection Compliments. <laughs> wherever books are sold. I um, love it. Okay, Kim. No, but I want to get into it. Um, I want to talk to you about Travis. And oh, you Lord. go through uh, in detail Travis's courting of you, mm -hmm. um, which you made him work for it. Um, there was a, I didn't like a Travis few... like that. I didn't, I didn't like Travis like that. Yeah. Could you tell me a little bit about like how you knew Travis was, um, right for you? Because at first you didn't know that. Mm -mm. Now, you know, again, you know, we've talked about in a couple of episodes about, you know, are hustling and we're trying always so hard. I mean, I did it the wrong way. And I talk about a painful divorce I went through. Um, and that was a manufactured hustling situation where I made things happen. Mm -hmm. And the marriage didn't last. And Travis came and pursued me and he knew. And I, I didn't recognize it <laughs> because I think I was blinded by shame and regret and disappointment in myself from my past relationships. And so I didn't feel worthy enough to receive, I think, what was true and real and authentic. And I think a lot of times, and I certainly didn't have the confidence to recognize it. And I think that's what happens when 
we make mistakes in our lives that we carry so much shame. We don't even need people to judge us or or shame us or hate on us. We do it to ourselves so well that it really stops you sometimes from receiving the blessing or receiving the opportunity. And Travis was just persistent. And again, Travis is a very confident man. Um, he's not a perfect man, and he's certainly by no means, you know, even a person, even a man who I would say is strong all the time. But when it came to our relationship, he just knew and he wasn't going to take no for an answer. Nothing deterred him. <laughs> and and I, I remember him. just being like, my mom was like, this poor boy, my Lord. <laughs> And I remember it took me moving away from the city of Atlanta to another state, to Tennessee, to realize what Travis was and who he was. And a lot of times you kind of have to step away and look back. Yeah. And when people say, don't look back, never look back, I don't agree with that. I was like, just be in the present. Don't look back. Don't look forward. I don't agree with that. There's so much from your past that you can harvest and so much, so much that you've been through in your life that has led you to this point and could give you this burst of confidence that you need to become everything you are. Or uh, this, uh, Let me say that. It, it can give you that burst of confidence that you need to become everything you are meant to be. Um, yeah. And that's what happened. When I left Travis and let it go and left, I looked back. I thought, was that stupid? He is fantastic. <laughs> I'll never forget it. It was like instant. It was like overnight instant. Like, oh my and God. And there's such a memorable scene in Graceland yeah. um, with you and Travis. And I'm not going to ruin yeah. it. You have to read the book to get that scene. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Um, I just like. It. My mom says it's sensual. I'm like, mother, you need to get out more. This <laughs> is sensual. so PG. But it's, uh, come on, Zach, it's PG. It's, there's nothing, like, I mean, it's not even PG-14. It's it's PG-11. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice, but you feel it, you know, and, and I think that's the I thing. Tell you, like, I'm going to yeah. tell you this. This is awful. I can't believe I'm saying this. That Graceland experience with Travis, I've never been turned on like that, ever. <laughs> See, and you're saying PG, but I don't know if I've been go. turned on like that since either. We've been married 20 plus years, but I'm just saying like in my whole entire like adult life or my mm -hmm. life period, because I'm, I'm not that active, y'all. I'm just like, I didn't grow up, you know, swinging from the chandeliers. That was, I've never been that, can I say turned on? Turned on as I was at that say Graceland. It. That was also I mean, a chapter in the book people people challenged. They were like, are you sure you want to put all your stuff out there? I'm like, yo, it's not go. that bad. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't roll around I mean, and make out and get naked at Graceland. I mean, I'm just saying, but it was it was a moment. It was intimate. It was very intimate. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're moving on. Okay, moving on, moving on. Because uh, that, that scene is great. But there's, I think... For me, the most powerful scene in the book, and I, I wonder if you would agree, I think maybe you would, um, we find you in this moment, you're about to give birth to Blanton, um, yeah. you're, there's complications, you're in the hospital, mm -hmm. the doctor basically tells you it's, it's what, you're like eight weeks uh, premature, right? Mm -hmm. um, the doctor tells you this baby's coming out tonight. They haven't induced you yet. Nothing has officially started or shouldn't have started, but you know something's wrong. Yeah. And that whole scene, um, and then, you know, I don't know how deep to get into it. I don't want to give away spoilers, um, but there's this moment where you're alone in the bathroom mm -hmm. and you're covered in blood Mm -hmm. And you just kind of let go. And I can't get that out of my head, to be honest with you, Kim. Yeah, I mean, even talking about it just stirs up so much love. Because at that moment, I mean, it truly was a near-death experience. 
but it didn't <laughs> feel that way. Um, there was fear, but the fear left pretty quickly into it. And what it did for me was was a little different than what I hear people when they say, well, not, not really. It's just a different perspective. So you hear all these people who have all these near death experiences, or I had read it and, you know, heard about it and seen movies about near death experiences. And people say it just changed their whole life. It changed the way they looked at life and everything. And it did that for me, but it did it in a very different way. Mm -hmm. It awakened in me this passion for purpose. Because I felt such love from God in that moment that I wanted to be with him. And you have to read the book to get the whole story. We don't have time to tell it. So I thought, well, if he's going to keep me here, it has to be a big reason to be apart from him and to be here. I must have some big reason to still be here. And I because you thought you were dying, like you thought I knew I was, was dying, it. and the doctors told me I was. He was shocked. He's like, "I don't know how you're not dead." I mean, we had blood. I had blood clots in in my placenta the size of softballs. Yeah, I mean, several blood clots. I mean, they they took all of that in a big jar and studied it. I mean, it was <laughs> one of those things where I'm like, you know, when people when there's thirty people, nurses and doctors all up in your, just know this. When 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 you are sitting there and all of a sudden you look up in a hospital room and there's 30 or 40 people in there running around like chickens with their heads cut off and talking like this big mumbo. I was like, what's okay, this ain't good. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, it's just yeah. everybody there was big jars, there was big incubator. I mean, it was just all this. Mm-hmm. And it happened so fast. And I was by myself. It was just me and Blanton on that bathroom yeah. floor. And no one will ever tell me I did not see. That light, because I saw a light, and I felt the light. And when that all went away, and I came to, and then the motion started happening, and then Blanton was born, what, 10, 15 minutes later. Yeah, incredible. I knew I got to get busy with what I'm supposed to be doing on this earth, because life is very, very precious and short. And that changed my whole life. Mm. Now, look, after that moment, I had another big aha moment because I was so, God had me in a huge waiting period (laughs) in my life from that moment to when I started really operating in that calling in a big way. So, again, your fashion for greatness and the thread of your life is is creating this calling that's lived out. It's not just one yeah. and done. I'm going to do this. And it's gonna, I mean, that, that's what I, I realized in that moment on that bathroom floor. I knew, well, there's got to be a big reason why I'm here because why would he just not go on and take me with him? And I know that sounds hokey and cheesy and again, and some people might not believe, I, I really don't care. Because those are the moments. I mean, that's a life, right? I lived it. And that's yeah, yeah you I was lived in it. it. You lived it. And I and you could feel it. I mean, you could that's feel not, it from I, the writing, you could feel it from the the mm-hmm. the just raw emotion in that scene. And you know, I'm going into it thinking like, you know, at first I was like, well, this is like, I know I know Kim's okay, obviously, but like, I know Blanton's okay, right? But I was like, this is why our medical system's so messed up. Like, why aren't these nurses well, listening to Kim? Kim's telling them there's a problem. Why aren't they listening to Kim? There's not a problem. She wouldn't think there was a problem. That's what I'm saying. It's like, y'all, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Like, everything happens for a reason. And I wouldn't take that experience for anything. Yeah. And that's what I mean. It's it you you had to be there. You had to be in that moment in that position. It. And then and then my favorite my by like the best like follow up to that is then 
you were so worried once your family arrived and everything was okay <laughs> about cleaning up that damn bathroom oh, and Zach. not letting. <laughs> it looked like Carrie, that horror movie Carrie, with the blood <laughs> everywhere. It was everywhere. And what had happened was, I didn't know what it was, but the doctor later told me that, you know, that these blood clots busted. Yeah. I mean, it was on the walls. It was everywhere. I thought to myself, and I was so concerned because it looked scary. It was very, I mean, my mother was going to be like, Lord, <laughs> You didn't want your mom to go in there. Yeah. Yeah. And and and, I just... and Blanton was born without any of my family there. It was just me and Blanton and 20 doctors, 20 nurses yeah. in the room. Yeah. Yeah. I, that was so perfect for me. It's like, that's, that's, you know, the, that's the mental load of being a yeah. mom and a woman, that's right? right? That's like. We're worried yeah. about where they're going. We're, don't let them see all the blood in the bathroom. Don't let them see that. Yeah, hide the bathroom. Hide the bloody bathroom for you, please. I drove that woman crazy. Um, she was like, please just get the nurse, somebody in here to clean the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kim. Um, okay, so we're we're almost out of time, but I, I do want to jump to sort of this last moment in the book. And there are so many great moments. Like, I mean, you go through... Um, you know, winning Miss Georgia, losing Miss America. Um, you go through just so many of these huge, getting onto QVC, saying no mm -hmm. to QVC before saying yes to QVC, like all of these huge things in your life. Um, but there was another sort of moment where that really stuck with me personally that I wanted to talk to you about. And it was the first time, I don't know if it was the first time, or it was one of the times you went on Steve Harvey. Mm -hmm. And it was the time, and here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull out the quote. Um, you walked on the stage, right? And Steve says, you're the most confident woman he's ever seen, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go through in the book, and this is later in the book, and I think this is one of the things that I really like about the way that you've laid this all out, because it's not a straight line. It's not like, here's how to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, you start going through this negative self-talk spiral, like on the stage in Steve Harvey, right? Yep. And the thing, I, I won't read the whole thing, but it, it ended with you just saying to yourself, you're not enough. Right. And I, when he said that and I walked out on the stage, Zach, I was like, you are the biggest fraud. <laughs> How the crap are you going to teach this, talk to this woman about having confidence when you're sitting up here and you're absolutely the most insecure person on the planet, on the stage? And, you know, I'm a professional, so I just kept on plowing through. Yep. But I think that's how we all feel about ourselves, is that we feel like how we're presenting and what we're presenting is, is not who we are. But, but let me tell you this. Through that time when Steve said that, and I felt like I was a fraud on that stage and helping that girl, you know, through finding her confidence. Yeah, being a confidence coach, literally on that the stage. That's what he called yeah. me, a confidence coach. I'm like going, yeah. oh my God, oh, I'm so not confident. <laughs> and, and that was true, it was real. I mean, I'm not just saying that to be funny, it was real. And I remember, so I, I must have, you know, presented a little bit of hesitation because I was reading comments on Twitter afterwards and this guy, I'll never forget it, because I screenshot, I still have it. This guy said to me, confidence coach, she looks like the most insecure person I've ever met, ever seen, or something like that. Yeah. And I normally don't respond to social media, negative social media. I really don't, because everybody has their opinions, and, you know, God bless. Sure. But when I read it, I was like, he is so right. And so I just responded to him. I said, you are absolutely right. I am. And that's when, that was another game changer for me in my self-confidence because I, at that point, was the realest, authentic I'd ever been. Just saying, you know what? You're right. I am secure. I didn't justify it. I didn't try to say, and we all are and all that. I just was like, you're right. I am insecure. And there is... That in lies true confidence. When you can be authentic and you can be real, and I don't mean real, like I'm just real. If you don't, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you right. can just own the insecurities and the and the mistakes and all of that and be
be okay anyway, that's true confidence because y'all, we all have them. There is no one that has it all together. Yeah. And if you think I've got it all together, then you need to get some glasses because I don't. <laughs> I have nothing together. I, I would actually say I have nothing together. I am I am running around with my tail on fire about 90% of, uh, 94% of the time. And the other 6%, you're in line at the drive-thru or something. I'm asleep. <laughs> I'm asleep. <laughs> That's how much sleep I don't get, y'all. Yeah, right. Tell I'm just saying. It. So, you know, we can't look to, we can look to other people. You can look at this book and get encouragement. You can look at this book and get what's worked for me. The little bit of stuff I've lived and the little bit of life I've lived, it's worked for me. But honestly, this book is to point you back to you. I want you to look at your life and what have you gleaned from it? So you've been through those divorces, you've been through the the health problems, financial problems, You've been cheated on, betrayed. You might have been the cheater. You might have messed up and made mistakes. You, you might have been, you know, fill in the blank. But all that works together for the good of your calling, if you'll let it. And you know what? When you let it, the confidence that comes from walking in that, nobody can take it from you. So if you say to me, Kim, are you confident? Heck yeah. I sure am. But it's not in my talents or my giftings or my razzle-dazzle personality or my bleach blonde hair or my tig old bitties <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. It's not, it's not in any <laughs> of that. My confidence is I know whose I am and who I am. And I know why I'm here. And that's it. No one is ever going to edify better than you. I don't and know I about think, that. Well, not, not better. They won't do it better. They can probably do it just as good, but ain't nobody can do it better, no. <laughs> and no one can do it like you. That's right. But that's true yeah. for everybody, Zach. Mm -hmm. That's true for everybody. And now we're no full circle. Can, yeah. <laughs> no one can do your calling in, in better than you. No one can. Yep. And no one has what you have. And And... People say to me all the time, and because I have a lot of cynics out there, are you and critics, and who are like, Ken, sure. no, 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 that sounds good. And went, well, it doesn't sound good. It is good. I'm living it. And I'm nobody special. I'm nobody's, I'm no, no Einstein out here. I'm no, you know, Victoria's Secret swim model. I'm none of that. I just, I just am a regular old person out here who knows why she's here. And there's nothing more fulfilling than that. So if that helps one person, if this book helps one person on the path to what they're called for in confidence, I've done my job. I want to leave it at that because I, I think for me, this book has been um, really like it, it really has touched me, Kim. And, and I'm not just saying oh. that I'm not just on the show saying that I, I, you know, I started reading it on the plane. You gave it to me, I think. And I remember there's like a moment. It's actually really funny. I just, I'll leave it at this. There's a moment where I was like, I'm so relieved because the book is actually really good. Like there was a moment <laughs> where I was like, I'm so glad Kim's book is actually oh excellent. God. Because oh like God. what, what on this podcast, we're going to be selling it either way, but it's got actually good. That's it. Drop mic. Roll to music. Mic. That's it. That That's is it. it. That's hilarious, Zach. I love it. Well, that means a lot to me. You're welcome, Me Kim. too, Zach. Me too. Well, thank you for coming on the uh, Zach Miller Show, formerly Kim Gravel Show. Um, you it. could find Kim Gravel uh, all over the internet um, by collecting confidence uh, everywhere books are sold. Um, buy it on QVC. Buy it on everywhere. Um, we love y'all. <laughs> Thanks we for do. coming. We love y'all. Thank you, Zach. This was fun. <laughs> this was great. Way to flip the script. All right. I love it. All right. Let's play it out. Let's play it out. Wait, wait, first. Let's get in confidence. <laughs>
All right, y'all, here is a sneak peek of my new book, Collecting Confidence, and I'm going to be sharing the entire introduction of the book with you on why I wrote this book. One of my favorite parts of the introduction is I say, you're not broke and you don't need fixing. So listen to this. Why I wrote this book. You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. Unknown. Life has a way of knocking the breath out of you. Sometimes, after one too many punches in the gut, we look for answers on television, through spiritual practices, and in self-help books. I have personally read more self-help books than Starbucks has drink combinations. And I have 31 unused planners and journals to prove it. I also have more Sharpies than Office Max. That's why I wrote this book. I'm looking for answers, and I bet you are too. If you want to know how to repair your marriage or lose 30 pounds or be a better mom, then I'm just going to tell you, you're reading the wrong book. Let me state for the record, this is not a self-help book. I mean, it could be a self-appreciation book, a self-reflection book, or a self-confidence book, but not, I repeat, a self-help book. I'm not asking you to help yourself, get healthier, or change it all. You don't have to do anything. You're not holding a book. You're holding a mirror. And not one of those scary 50 times magnifying mirrors that make you think, hmm, when did I turn into Chewbacca? This is a mirror that will help you see the magnificent, self-assured, beautiful creation you've always been. You might not see her immediately, but you'll see her slowly drop her guard and the true you will emerge. And she's a beauty. There's nothing new under the sun except you. Your unique hair, even if it's falling out and gray. Your personality, even if you come on a little too strong or are too shy and submissive. And your skin, whether you're brown like coffee or white as the creamer. This applies to you, whether you are big and curvy or so skinny you can stand under a clothesline in a rainstorm and stay dry. This book is not about how you categorize yourself or what you've done. Girl, I don't care what you've done. I've done bad things and made horrible decisions in my life, and I'm still here. This is about something much bigger than the mess you may have made of the parts of your life. Where you are is where you were meant to be for now. But there's more for you in your future. Good things, beautiful things. And this book will give you permission to be everything you were created to be starting from right where you are. And the truth is that every woman from every walk of life can be exactly who she was meant to be. Spoiler alert, you were meant to be a person of confidence or to put it more memorably, a person of tenacity and audacity. Yes, little old you. Hard to believe? I'll show you. We're going to have some fun. We're going to laugh, cry, and create together. You're going to pop out of bed with a newfound sense of purpose. Everything you want and long for is possible. I'm a designer, and the most enjoyable part of fashion to me is the design process. I get to let my creative juices run wild. What are we going to make? What is it going to look like? Let's try it this way. Let's try another color. Imagine how fun it is to start designing your life. Be creative. Life is supposed to be fun, and it's going to be. You're not broken. You don't need fixing. But that's a hard pill for some of us to swallow. I want to arm you with ways to protect your heart, mind, and calling, because there are those who want to see you defeated. I want this book to empower you, to help you understand the way you think about yourself, how you see yourself, and the way you talk to yourself. I want you to truly believe in your own beauty. Girl, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. There is no one else like you. Your story and your life experiences are unique and useful. You don't have to clean up your act or change a lick to move into the wide open spacious life you long for deep within. Sometimes in life, our confidence waxes and wanes. But the most important thing to remember is that in every experience, God allows us to learn and move and grow in our confidence. 
and we collect confidence experience by experience. So take out your journals, planners, Sharpies, and a big old box of tissue. Let's stop gasping for air because divine confidence is already right there in you. You have everything you need. And it's time to let it out. This was great. I Way think to flip the script. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Thanks. Do it. Was I an okay host? Am I fired yet? <laughs> I thought you were fantastic. <laughs> All right. I, I'm totally serious, Kim. There's a moment where I was like, oh, thank God this book is good. Like, seriously.